if you take away objective criteria, uh, you take away um, comparison. Right. And if you take away comparison, you take away competition. And if you take away competition, well, then we're all just perfect the way we are. Right. I'd like to thank our top sponsors, Jared Fountain, Marco Campos, Anders Berge Christensen, Fergus Ryan, as well as our anonymous donors. Can quality be measured? Ranking the works of living painters according to objective criteria. Anti-Western ideologues have taught us to view such ideas as cynical and oppressive. Yet we are currently enacting the alternative iconoclasm, cancel culture, and quality measured by gender, race, and political affiliation. That is why tonight's guest is calling for a clear set of dogmas to give culture a solid base with, edu uh, with education, with ed entertainment <laughs> as the highest virtue. Borg Nordrum, welcome to the Cave of Apollos. Thank you. So you have made a list of the best works made today. Yes, and um, well, we can see uh, actually the top three paintings on that list uh, here. Uh, the Golden Cape by uh, my father, Ald Nordrum. So this is a very biased list. <laughs> and then uh, in second, uh, The Outcast by Sebastian Salvo. And in third, uh, Bruno Passos, The Passenger, or I, I like to also call it uh, The Horse Thief. The Horse Thief, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but, but you made this list yourself. Or have you been working together with people or like you, this is your... Yes, I, 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 talked with, uh, I talked with some painters about mm -hmm. it and I worked uh, Closely with the uh, civilization, right? Uh, th that's uh, w with Karl Kursnes in, in civilization. Uh, mm. The the whole list is uh, available in an article uh, there, mm -hmm. both in English and in uh, Norwegian. Yes, yeah, so we'll post a link to that so people can check the list. Yeah, <laughs> right. And the interesting thing is actually that most of these paintings are they are made uh, the last ten years. Actually, this is made. Uh, in 2018, that one last year, and this one, well, a little bit right. uh, earlier. Right. But it's it's it seems like the level is going up in right. painting. So then we are talking about the essence of the whole thing here. How do you know that the level is going up? <laughs> so, so how did you get to? Uh, uh, how did you choose the criteria? Because that's all always the point, right? You can say, well. You have certain criteria, but how do you know that those criteria work? Yeah, uh, I have, I uh, thought about it later on after I worked a lot with the list, and it's actually based on entertainment. Yeah, uh, that as a painter you should entertain the audience, like really entertain the audience, not just in a deep contem contemplation way but you should grip them and them with at the highest uh, with uh, uh, evoking the emotions of pity and fear right yeah so and, so yeah and that's very specific i mean it, it reminds me of um uh save the cats the the, the yeah. book by blake snyder uh whom you recommended to me in in the in the uh, you know that's why i read it and then he you recommended it to me right um and he is, uh, you know, when you're so used to, uh, this is what I, what, what I talked to Stefan Bolter about, when you're so used to thinking in the art way, then when you come in and you say, here are the clear ob objective criteria, then people react to that, right? So uh, if you rank the, also the criteria though, what are, what's the most uh, immediate criteria that you need to judge if a painting is good or bad and then 
uh, how the criteria develop. Well, I would like to say that it's uh, the graph, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, that's that's something we've been looking a lot at. And, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm looking forward to getting to that because it's yeah. it seems really weird, <laughs> but it is really. Uh, it has a, a clear logic to it. But yeah. I mean, like yes, yeah. yeah. So 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 if you look at uh, all these paintings, what they have in common, of course, they are well executed, mm -hmm. and they are quite well composed. And they are all uh, quite timeless, but most importantly, they display a lot of drama. They right. display, and it's uh, it's important when we're talking about drama that it's the Greek definition, which means uh, men in action. Right. Drama. Physical mean, action, movement. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. So people doing something. That is the etymology of drama. Yeah, so uh, this I do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From from Greek, right? Yeah. And so, so it, today we 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 talk about uh, drama. Uh, often we could talk about the dramatic expression and then like a facial expression. Yeah. But uh, etymologically, maybe it's more correct to say uh, that that is a, um, an intense expression. Right. Because drama implies action. That something is going on that uh, you are actually uh, doing something like this man running here after the old man or uh, in, in Bruno Posso's painting the man uh, swimming with his horse and yeah and this man leaving the city and then then you're talking about uh, f as a part of that a fundamental thing that uh, that uh, Snyder Blake Snyder talks about that Aristotle talks about and this is causality that there is a connection, physical connection between the figures. Right. Yeah, and, and that's also. Yeah. That's and then we're also close to talk about cre credibility. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, can you say something about that? Because, I mean, when we talk about these things, it, it's uh, easy to misunderstand what is realistic or credible. Yeah, well, uh, for example, uh, a flying man uh, is not credible. But. There is an important uh, thing here, and that is that you, if if you can make a flying man believable, if you can depict a flying person and you make it believable, then that's actually uh, that can that can um, be more convincing, or yeah, or it, it it can work. Yeah, but it's it's a very risky uh, field. Right. So so also that's what these paintings have in common: that they're all credible. They're showing credible action. Incredible action makes it all more also more dramatic because you believe believe in it. Right, you can believe in it. And I mean, one, one thing that um, okay, okay, so you have execution, you have composition, you have drama and timelessness. Hmm. Um, before we we move on, because I, I think we should really talk quite a bit about drama because that is the most important thing. Um, but well, to use these uh, examples then. Uh, can you explain in one of them or all of them exactly how they they uh, satisfy those those uh, criteria? Uh, quality, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you did mention the thing about the connection between the figures, but I mean execution, composition. Yeah. Yeah. No. no so, sorry. I, sorry. I meant I, yeah. I meant execution. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so um, uh, well, one thing. Uh, okay. So so you have proportions should be in order for it to be a well executed painting and. Mm. Uh, and the colors should uh, harmonize. Yes, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, and and uh, something we've emphasized is uh, a painting movement. Right. Uh, that if you uh, because that can that can uh, that can emphasize the drama going on in, in in the painting. Right. And so so that's that's what late Titian did, and also you can see it with uh, my father here and. And Sebastian and, and Bruno, they're all they're all uh, painted a bit rough, yeah. which creates uh, movement. Right, because if you have, to, I mean that that's the thing, you you could think that a perfectly painted painting is something where with clear outlines and cl a lot of details and a lot of focus, but that's <laughs> that totally destroys the narrative or the drama of it, right? Yes, and there's also something about uh, that you should see this from uh, a bit of distance. I mean, 
we are not uh, watching paintings through uh, uh, what do you call those uh, things? Uh, call a looking glass or yeah, 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 um, yeah looking glasses. Yeah, yeah. We're watching them uh, yeah. from a certain distance as if they were human beings standing there. Right, right. Yeah. So you cannot you cannot outline everything. And uh, I mean, that's what's fascinating about about uh, the Golden Cape. Uh, this thing about movement that you can actually in a still paint, still image create movement. How the reflection in the water is slightly behind the heel. Mm -hmm. So it's where the foot was and then you get this uh, dr uh, strong sense of, uh, of uh, movement. Yeah, you, you, you have talked a lot about yeah. uh, the Golden Cape before, also comparing yeah. it to the early version from the from 1990, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That uh, we saw, we saw that in Seven, Seven Bridges Foundation. Yeah. Uh, that is an amazing uh, uh, comparison. How things are very sculptural in the early version, very clear, but it, it compared to this version, it becomes quite stiff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, and and uh, and here the the background is also uh, also doing a lot to emphasize the drama mm -hmm. because right. uh, there's a storm. You see, uh, in Daddy's Girl, that's a very very good example. Yeah, you know, um, uh, I actually my my father used to uh, he used to. Uh, Shut off all, take off all the lights in the studio, and then put a warm spot on the paintings. And we would sit down uh, together with all the, uh, his students and the family and, and all, and and uh, look at the painting and, and play some uh, uh, music by Hans Zimmer or uh, <laughs> or uh, Tchaikovsky or yeah. And it's like it's like being in the cinema. Yeah. It's uh, and, and, and right. we did that with yeah. uh, we did that with the, the Golden Cape, uh, Daddy's Girl, Memorosa, all the grand uh, stories that he have uh, that he has painted, uh -huh. and and that's uh, that's uh, if you want to compete with the movies, that's what you have to do. Right. You could you could make these uh, little places like cinemas, and you could have this painting and, and, and display it with some very dramatic music. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic uh, experience. Well, you know, that's what uh, Frederick Edwin Church did. Had these tours with this, uh, this landscape, Niagara Falls and whatever, and people would pay to come in as kind of a cin cinematic uh, performance. Oh, the, yeah. the, 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 the waterfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. But um, then there's this thing about timelessness. Yes. Uh, because how can that be visualized? How can you object objectively point to something being timeless? Well, first I'd like to say that uh, th that's that's one of the, mo the one of the most important things that Odd has, uh, 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 you know, introduced in the field of uh, figurative painting. Yeah. Uh, because because our time is so it's such a mess. Timelessness is more important than ever. Mm. And I mean, can you blame Maud for just throwing everything into a, a landscape that we are not uh, that we, we are not uh, seeing around us? I mean, uh, you, ha you have to create an alternative to, this, to the, the world that we're living in. Right. Because I mean, uh, that's something I've been thinking about because I, I think that is perhaps the most important thing that I've learned from him. Um, and I, I just just uh, struck me that you know if you reflect your time, you die along with it because reflecting the, the prejudices of the time, that those prejudices they change, mm -hmm. and in a hundred years it's not socially beneficial to believe in those prejudices. It might be destructive to you even, and then those references just fall away and just become some absurd document of a time, right? Yes, and, and uh, it's, it's uh, important to see things from a bird's eye perspective. Right. To see it for what it actually is. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you had the Golden Cape here, for example, and, and, and this happened on, on a street in New York or something. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't see it for what, what, what it was. But then you have, you could use this as a counter argument, and well, what about Andrew Wyeth? Yes, but he is he's quite uh, he's quite uh, timeless uh, even though uh, it's it's often in in rural areas. Yeah. 
but he, uh, he he doesn't focus on the on the on the things from his time right. in the paintings. But that's kind of like uh, with Ibsen, when the so-called contemporary yeah. dramas. You think it is it's about the eighteen eighties, but uh, so I talked to uh, Adarim about it. <laughs> Something quite quite different from that, right? Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. and it's very very difficult to go outside your time too. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. imagine if Ibsen was going to do that. You will have to. It's like uh, Tolkien or some some uh, author like that. You have to yeah. you have to m make everything and make sure that everything is working yeah, in yeah. this 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 world yeah. that you are not living in. Yeah, because uh, you could then say, well, why this uh, strong emphasis on being timeless? Uh, because if you really are skilled, you will go into the human psyche and what human drama, and no matter what clothes they wear, if you are skilled enough to choose. The, the scenography or the clothes don't really matter. Well, you have this you have this movie called uh, Jakten by Thomas Winterberg. The Hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Hunt. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a really good movie. Yeah. Uh, but I think it would would have been even better if if it was set in a more timeless landscape. Right. So you you're just uh, the movies. Of course, you can. I think in movies you can uh, get away with it. With with the, the the time aspect more than in painting because uh, you have a story going on yeah. uh, that goes from A to Z yeah. uh, uh, that can have a like it c can be a timeless story set in a set in a uh, uh, in in a contemporary world right but in painting you absolutely you need to uh, you need to make sure that the visual is also working because that's everything you have you have this one moment and. That whole moment uh, has to function perfectly as a story. Yeah, well, I guess with that uh, movie that you mentioned, what you're left with is an image of what the title says of a hunt, mm -hmm. and uh, you're not s that concerned with actually the, the naturalistic details of it. And if you should make that into a painting, well, then you have to condense it really and try to get rid of all the naturalistic or uh, contemporary references. Yes, and and, yeah. and uh, well, I. Titian, Titian was the the idol for this list because he is uh, he is the well one of the three greatest painters, perhaps the greatest painter. Right, and then we besides are besides my father, uh, and 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 that was his goal. His goal was to uh, display the past, present, and future in one single painting. Right. Yeah, and that that's that um, uh, wonderful book uh, by oh, what's his name again? Uh, Titian and Tragic Painting. But I, 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 I have I have it here. Maybe we should yeah. look at that because I yeah. have this. Uh, uh, now now we can really talk about the graph. Oh Because yeah. uh, well, if it's visible here, you can see this is the absolutely most perfect graph that I have ever seen. And 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 what this graph uh, measures is the luminance in in the painting. Right, uh, going from uh, extreme white on the right and extreme black on the left, and then you have the midtones in the center. Right, and this is something that uh, Luke Hillstar d discovered, wasn't it? Yes, when, and when we met him yeah. uh, in 2016, I think he had just discovered it. And uh, yeah, yeah we, we have that in the uh, episode four of the Hunt yeah, yeah. Nerdroom. So, so just specifically, can you talk about how how do you find a graph? Because people can do this on their their own computers, right? To find yes, so you can you can uh, you can uh, f it's called a channel histogram, mm. uh, and and you find it in all all the uh, image uh, the photo editing uh, softwares, right? And, and preview on Mac is, is, is a good good one to use. Right. And uh, this thing then measures uh, sort of the well the hierarchy of values, or that there's uh, because there, there's some uh, on that list. You have different uh, histo histograms of different uh, quality, <laughs> different levels, and uh, I've seen that some of them where you have strong colors, separate colors that are not repeated other places in the painting, or where you have you know, almost pure white or two dark uh, or two black uh, dark uh, areas, then they don't get a good graph. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's you, you, if you get a lot of mountains uh, yeah. in the graph, it's a it's a very bad painting. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 if you think about co color and and um, uh, well, value harmony. Yeah, is that what you can call it? Yeah, hierarchy of values, or like that. Yeah. Because I'm I'm thinking about. Um, uh, there's one thing that I read that Samuel van Hogstraten wrote. He was a student of, uh, of um, Rembrandt. Mm. And he talks about that in a painting, there are special two things I noticed. He said that the colors should be friends. Mm -hmm. And then he's talking about how uh, light colors should be surrounded by sl less light colors and dark colors surrounded by less dark colors. So we don't get the, the crash between the different uh, surfaces or the different areas of the painting, but everything is sort of smoothly transitions in from one thing to another. Yeah, that's that's, um, but that's not n that's not exactly what the graph is measuring because it's measuring uh -huh. the whole. So so uh, here you have some pretty nice graphs. The, the best paintings on the list have very good graphs. So just to, to really grasp the idea of this uh, histogram. Um, in Passos paintings, for, for example, mm. there's a better graph would be to have it go all the way up because then you have a longer stretch from the light to the darks. It should be evenly distributed between lights and darks. It shouldn't be too much, only uh, too much black, <laughs> but or a, a nice transition into the black. Yeah, th well, it's also this is this is this depends a lot on the reproductions when we are right. looking at these graphs. Yeah. Uh, uh, so if the reproduction is bad, you you might get uh, uh, an right. inaccurate uh, graph. Okay. But I think these reproductions are are quite good. And uh, uh, yeah, if you look at uh, Bruno Passos' uh, graph there, or the pa the graph for uh, the passenger. Um, it's 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 a quite quite good graph, but it's not um, it's not uh, at eighty five percent black, which is the ideal, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean the, pe the the peak, the peak should be around eighty five percent black, as in the golden cape here, yeah. and but and also it's also the graph should be smooth, uh, okay. as smooth as possible, because yeah. it means that you have as much variation uh, in the luminance in the colors. Uh huh. Uh, so so, um, uh, so if you get uh, you have too strong colors, for example, that the values of the colors are are uh, smoothly transitioned, but the, the colors themselves are too strong, then that makes a sort of bumpy histogram, right? You don't get that smooth uh, curve then. Yeah, well, it's not about the colors being strong, but if you only have strong color and not uh, a variation. Right. So so so, so uh, what I, what I concluded was that. Um, these graphs, uh, they actually show uh, if the painting has been thoroughly worked with. Okay, um, there's a couple of things more I think we should, should uh, talk about. Um, you mentioned pity and fear. But mm. well, that is, is one of the criteria when it comes to drama. Not, not just one of the criteria, yeah. the criteria. The criteria. Yes. So how can that be objectively asserted? Yeah, so that's that's something. Um, it's not like the graph, you know. I can't just uh, <laughs> check the graph and see if it's good. But that's that's the great thing about the graph yeah. that you have something that is absolutely you clear. Know, you cannot. Yeah. Uh, the machine is just calculating it yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, so so when we looked at this list, uh, or when I when I looked at this list, together with some other painters, um, it was we were all, always thinking. Uh, does this painting evoke the emotions of pity and fear in me when I see the painting? Right. And then, of course, if the if the dra if the dra drama is more archetypal, it will evoke more pity and fear, right. and especially if it's about death. Yeah. Uh, actually, none of these paintings are directly about death, but uh, there are dramatic uh, things going on here. Yeah, and then you, there's also another key uh, concept, uh, which is pathos. Yeah, I don't know if you thought about that specifically, but in I mean, implicit in pity and fear would be pathos, uh, strong emotions, and well, I actually, it literally means uh, physical suffering, as far as I've understood. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think that, that that's very akin to pity, uh, pity and suffering and drama, meaning physical actions being performed. Right? Well, I haven't thought specifically about pathos, but mm. uh, but I thought about tragedy. I mean, we we, uh, yeah. we we have focused on tragic paintings, not comic paintings. Yeah, because you could say that uh, you can have drama in comedy. Yeah. You can also have catharsis, some kind of catharsis in comedy, but it's much <laughs> yeah, yeah, stronger yeah, yeah. in tragedy. Because we are, because death is something that unifies everyone. I mean, everyone, yeah. everyone, everyone's going to die, and everyone is afraid of it. It's like a big, uh, big primal yeah. thing. You're not that afraid of having a good laugh, or no, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But but, but uh, w so uh, uh, so what you're saying is, <laughs> um, could you make a list like this also for sort of comic painting? And that the works would be, be on the same level, or is it per se on a lower level to, to paint comic <laughs> images? I mean, it's like, well, what yeah. example would that be? But well, I, 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 think, uh, I think you can best uh, show that by, uh, I mean, if you, if you uh, watch a movie, I mean, when do you cry? No. Do you cry when you see a, a comedy mm. or when you watch a tragedy? Yeah. I think in most cases people cry when they see a tragic thing happening on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, crying is at the top of the list. I yeah, think. and that is uh, the whole idea of pity that you actually yeah. are reliving in your mind what is going on. Yes, and it's also yeah. morally uh, superior because. Yeah. Uh, I think you can become a, a better human being with tragedy, but with comedy, I, I'm not sure. If, I mean, if you make a comedy uh, out of uh, uh, the the, um, the martyrdom of uh, Thomas More, mm. for example, and you know yeah. he gets executed and they're supposed to laugh, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, it's. Uh, with movies like that, I think you can become a better human being, more more humane, so you well, you can uh, think through it before you uh, sentence a person to death. Mm. Mm. I mean, some people actually, some people actually sentence people like Thomas More to death in society. Maybe they should watch movies like A Man for All Seasons. Uh, maybe that should be part of the uh, criteria for becoming a, a, a judge. Right. I mean, uh, uh, right. Uh, in, in in the courts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Hereby publicly announced. Um, it, I was thinking also of something that Snyder talked about, uh, because that's when you're t talking about. Um, so what's the best way of starting it? Okay, one one thing to talk about is uh, Snyder. Of course, talking about movies, but it's perfectly transferable to to painting. It talks about how you can have a lot of action but no story. So when you are, I'm just thinking if you, if the perfect spot is sort of a knife's edge, I, I know you can fall down into way too much, so-called too much drama, or it can be too little, right? I know about the perfect uh, example uh, to to mention. Okay, I'm a, a painter who has too much action and actually no story going on, but I'm not going to mention the name. <laughs> okay, of the but. Uh, <laughs> In in a purely uh, purely hypothetical example, no, what, but, yeah. what kind of mistakes can you make as a painter uh, if you're thinking I have to make drama, and but then you're not able to uh, really judge what functions as drama? Yeah, well, uh, baroque painting. Uh, there is a lot of baroque painting that is a that's a good example, right? Uh, of uh, too much going on and too little actually going on, right? Uh, I mean, that, that's what you see it very clearly. When you, you have to. Th th this is something Aristotle talks about in the Poetics that you have to uh, uh, narrow it down to. Uh, I think he's talking about this. Uh, narrow it down to one, uh, one, uh, um, one story, or there's one problem. Yeah. Uh, 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 that needs yeah. to be solved. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. King Oedipus by Sophocles, I yeah. think Aristotle As mentioned that it, it, it's one one problem. One fo yeah, yeah, and and Snyder talks about the same thing. I really learned that uh, as also from the, his angle, uh, his take on it. When he talks about different scenes, and every scene has to have one, like you come in and you go out, 
and that has one direction. It has one conflict that has to be solved in that scene, and not a lot of things, other things going on. Yes, and uh, and uh, uh, every time, so so uh, okay. Let's say scene one, uh, Mary and John, they 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 are they they were happy, but then they started fighting by the end yeah. of the scene, and then in scene two, uh, you have the opposite happening that. Uh, well, that Mary and John are, are uh, angry at each other, but then the the, the conflict is resolved right. by the end of the scene. So you have right. w w you mentioned that in the conversation with Hebe, going from plus minus to minus plus yeah. plus minus. Right. But you shouldn't do that like uh, r rigorously all the way throughout. It's nice with some variation here and there, so it doesn't yeah. become obvious. Yeah. But uh, yeah. like as a general rule, it's it's a good good way to do it. Yeah, um, because. I there's another thing too that I was thinking about just to sort of try to corner this idea of, of what drama really is. Um, in your list you have uh, of course quite a few <laughs> more names that we're talking about right here. Uh, but there's the one, for example, the, the portrait by uh, Colleen Barry. Yeah. Which is an um, just an amazing portrait. That was a nice discovery. I didn't know about her before. I, you know, I, I don't paint so I don't yeah. Uh, yeah. watch all of it all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that was that that is really an amazing portrait. And then I'm thinking, okay, how? Because, but yeah, we should mention that so people. It's a shame that she has stopped painting uh, from life. Oh, okay. well, I heard her speak about this. She says that she paints from photos now because it's more, uh, uh, it's it's cheaper. Okay, but that's uh, that, okay. Um, so, but but sticking to that portrait. Yeah, um, you have on this list. You have stars for <laughs> for execution composition drama timelessness yeah. um and um but uh, in the portraits and some uh, some other paintings um you have n slash a on nothing drama. nothing to add nothing to add and you have that on her portrait and then I was thinking, well, could you say then, I, mean, I understand you're talking about a literal understanding of drama. Mm -hmm. And in this portrait, she is not doing anything. It's, it's, she is, quote unquote, only looking or like uh, she's not moving, moving yeah, or doing yeah. anything. Um, but what about if you make a really strong portrait, which has that, you, you really can see the character of the person. There's a person crying with, with great you know, which is really credible. Isn't that a drama? Or are you quite strict about how it's talking, uh, understanding drama as physical action? Oh, I'm, I'm quite strict about yeah. that. And yeah. uh, there's a reason for it. I mean, um, in the movie, you, you, when you watch a movie, it's not just a, not just a face making a lot of uh, uh, facial expressions. It's, mm. it's action going on. Mm. And uh, at the highest, f in the, hi the highest form of entertainment, uh, you need that. You yeah. need actual uh, things going on, things going from one place to another. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, that the, 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 the ideal is that you can uh, see what, what happened, what is happening and what is going to happen. Yeah, and that's the causality. You, yeah, you can't do that with a little portrait. Mm. I mean, it can be wonderfully executed her, her portrait and Cheng Wu's uh, uh, portrait of Andrea so they're, they're yeah. wonderfully executed yeah. so th they're quite high up on the list because you have to I mean execution is quite important after yeah. all yeah uh, but, but okay so uh, we're talking about several things at the same time then I mean if you have so, so you would have a portrait uh, for example a portrait by, by Cheng, Cheng Wu or Colin Barry or yeah, one of those yeah. That could still rank higher than a composition which doesn't have that much credibility in the storytelling, or is w where the execution is not that uh, skilled. Or, or it's also less timeless. I mean, right. Colin Barry's portrait yeah. is, is very timeless, yeah. so that yeah. Yeah. that makes it also yeah. get higher up on the list. But, but yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. I was just thinking about uh, you know, <laughs> rating this from one to five stars. Yeah, or, or you can get one and a half to two and a half, and so on. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, people are, I'm sure people are going to critique it and, <laughs> and f uh, with good reasons because uh, yeah. uh, when you are dealing with objective criteria, you know, the, the critique is, is good. I mean, this is an early phase. Yeah. 
of this list. I'm trying yeah. to establish a system that works, yeah. that can actually, that can actually, uh, well, like they always say, uh, create a new renaissance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, but critique, uh, like Karl Kostas mentioned in uh, one of the previous conversations, is the is the best thing yeah. for when you're dealing with uh, the scientific method. Uh, because you, it, you can improve. Yeah, you can improve the the, the, the way it's measured. Yeah, but it, so okay. So one, <coughs> sorry. One critique could be, uh, um, for example, I honestly have to say I don't remember the name. There's one nude on the list. Oh, it got uh, how many stars was it on timelessness? Oh, well, point it got it got some stars on timelessness, and I was thinking. Uh, uh, you could say that a painting can have the visual signifiers of timelessness, you know, with clothing or lack of clothing or whatever, but still the technique is, is very indicative of a certain style or a certain time mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they painted in such and such well, way. Well, Sorn uh, would be an example of that, right? For example, right? Yeah. So have, have you considered that or like could that be a criticism of the list? Or? It could be, yeah. it could be. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you're thinking about that as, as being a problem with that painting, for example. Well, yeah, you could argue, well, should it have a half a star less or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, right? Yes, yeah. yes, uh, with, with Sorn, for example, it's... Uh, but, but you have to, in some ways, you have to uh, consider if it's well executed or not. Yeah. So maybe it's more about that. Right than right. the timelessness and because that many many paintings were executed like that in that period mm -hmm. like when Sorn was working mm -hmm. uh, but I mean if you don't know anything about these paintings and you see them in the 2000, 2000 years right. you're, you're, you're just dealing with you know is it well executed right right okay yeah. so yeah, yeah. But there, there are other painters uh, on the list uh, that are, were, there were some discoveries uh, that uh, I made when I was making this. The, the, I, w I went to all the different websites with figurative paintings. Uh, I was really trying to give, uh, uh, I mean, people outside the Nerdrum School yeah. uh, a good chance. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that, because that could be a criticism too. Right. Have you chosen too many from the Nerdrum studio? Well, I, Nerdrum I tried to find people right. outside, right. but there aren't that yeah. many dealing, de I mean, working with dramatic, uh, painting, mm -hmm. storytelling uh, in painting. Yeah, because, uh, because that is, uh, as I see, it, the major problem generally for uh, figurative painters that they do not uh, focus on storytelling, on being timeless, that they too much reflect their own time, or, well, or just sort of paint. Well, but if, even if they do, they, they, they usually end up just making a lot of things going on, like you yeah. mentioned, and, and there is yeah. no credibility to it. You don't believe in the story. Right. And, and also so a, a trap that many fall into is symbolism. Yeah. I, mean, I have yeah, to say yeah. it, symbolism is a big problem. Yeah. That, uh, that because uh, symbolism is a way of, you know, sort of making something narrative, but yeah. you're, 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 uh, you're protecting yourself through symbolism yeah, yeah. so it can mean several things. And yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah you, you're not... Um, you're not showing any weakness. Uh, well, perhaps. yeah, it's like what I really meant was. You can yeah, yeah, just yeah. add that to the painting. Yeah, yeah, so, so right? to, the, to the subjectivity yeah. Yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. But, but one, 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 uh, one big discovery was uh, uh, Cammie Davis. Yes. Uh, and her Narcissus uh, uh, motif. That's a nice one. That yeah, is yeah. a really nice one. I think one. it has, uh, it's on the top 10. Yeah. It yeah. ended up on uh, so, the top So uh, people can check that out on the list. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, civilization.no. Yeah, and we'll post a link. Uh, but they are now going to the list, looking at that painting. Uh, what could have made it even better? Are you asking me? Yeah. yeah well, I, I, I've tried to make it as good <laughs> as possible, so... No, that, that painting. Oh, that painting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, right. Uh, well, I think... If there's something that could yeah, yeah, be yeah, even yeah, yeah, improved yeah, why in, it's even not, more. Why it's not uh, the a absolute first? Yeah. Well, uh, for example, uh, paintings with uh, several figures. Yeah. Well, at least you have that in Sebastian. Sebastian's painting, uh, Sebastian Savo's painting has a lot of figures. Yeah. Uh, and and in odd there there's two and there are people in the background there but there are two right. like and, and and when you have more figures in the painting uh, there's more room for action and more room for drama it's more and more room for um, pity and error fear. also what it's more room for error 
Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it's yeah, more yeah. difficult to be able to pull it off, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's why yeah. we have also yeah. some paintings with a lot of figures far down on the list because right. yeah, they didn't they be didn't manage it because of course none of these criteria by themselves. The histogram by itself <laughs> it doesn't save you on this lift list. No, no, uh, that, no. but that, that's uh, it's a nice way of uh, of of uh, showing that uh, you can actually judge this objectively. Yeah, and and with the arc going to 85% black, uh, also to show that it's about drama. You, if yeah. you went the other way around, it would be the opposite. Right. And because, the, I mean, that, that's the thing, the whole modernist uh, cliche that you shouldn't use black is because, of course, with modernism, painting should be paint on canvas, and black is the most effective way <laughs> of creating contrast and therefore drama. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe you can have just a black surface, but... Uh, well. Do, again, not to start to include light because then, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> then something is going on. Okay, um, uh, I wanted to get into the to the idea of um, the current situation in yeah. culture. But the last thing before we get to that, when we're talking about drama, here's a landscape by Lars Hartwig, not on the list. Yeah, I'm sorry. Then I'll I'll. I'll, uh, I want to focus on this in one of, our, uh, one of the master classes uh, up, up, upcoming. Um, is this dramatic? Can a landscape be dramatic? There's well, a small figure here, but I mean, it's like it's, it yeah. is a, basically a landscape. Well, some some of the some of the trees have some. Uh, it looks like some human beings are right. entangled inside the yeah. tree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's something. Yeah. And and if something is going on, I mean, you're 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 go, you're getting there. Yeah. But but, it, but but figures figures human beings will uh, in action will always be more dramatic because yeah. you are a human being, and you want to recognize yourself when you're looking at the painting. Right. 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 So, but but we have not included landscapes on this list mm. because it's 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 a different field, right? And and with Titian as an ideal and the Renaissance mm. uh, and and the ancient Greeks as ideals, um, uh, we have to focus on the human figure. What has what uh, what has the most uh, the the highest entertainment value? No, back mm. to, back again to the movies. If you just have landscapes <laughs> in a movie and there's no <laughs> human beings there. They're not going to go to the cinemas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we have some questions from the audience, so I want to um, deal with that before we move on. So this is a question from Instagram. Um, if someone argued that Nerdrum is not a great painter and his assessments were correct, could the conclusion still be wrong? Intellectually, it seems everything can be argued for or against, but the work still seems to speak beyond those conclusions. So what would we do? Since we cannot, can't necessarily rely on either fully, then how much should we re rely on argumentation and what we might call in this case, perhaps intuition? Well, what did he say in the beginning about Nurgen being, what did he say? If someone argued that Nerdum is not a great painter and his assessments were correct, could the conclusion still be wrong? And his assessment being correct? Yeah, I, I find it a slightly confusing uh, 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 phrasing. Yes. I mean, but but at least I understand the point. With intellectually, it seems everything can be argued for or against, but then the work still proves itself somehow. I mean, yeah. how do you know that there is objectivity, basically? <laughs> well, I'm th th that's why we have these uh, criteria. And actually, when mm. we, 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 when I and some other people lo looked uh, looked through the list, I, I actually I didn't I didn't place the paintings according to what I my my, my intuition. Mm. Uh, but I looked at the the, the uh, okay. So I gave them stars and timelessness, execution, drama, and composition, and then based on what they got from all those criteria, they ended up somewhere on the list. Right. So, uh, so um, yeah, it was not it was not uh, placed in, in with intuition. But we, of course, you could say that when we selected the paintings, or when I selected the paintings, they were selected. Uh, I had to choose what I th thought was the best from each painter. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's with with the criteria a little bit in mind. But of course. 
there is something there that you can perhaps criticize. Right. Um, because, uh, and, and I would presume that when you, uh, well, I'm putting words in your mouth, uh, when you have that list and you start looking more closely at it and start comparing with the different uh, paintings uh, to each other, mm. then things uh, change also. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's also something that was done that, uh, all the time, looking yeah. at, looking at, uh, uh, okay, this one, ha this painting has that much in drama, but how does that compare to this painting? Yeah, yeah. If this if this painting is that dramatic, and then things were moved around like that, always comparing. That's very important because you right. you you can you can give stars, but the stars don't mean anything if you don't if you don't compare it right to the others. Right. Uh, but you know, back to back to this problem of, uh, of course, uh, Sebastian Salvo. I know Sebastian Salvo, and and and, and uh, my father is placed at the top. So this is a yeah. totally biased uh, list, you could say. But but. Imagine if uh, Shakespeare had a son. Mm. Well, he did actually, and and um, well, he had children at least. Yeah. Um, and uh, and his son made a list over the greatest playwrights mm. in his time. Yeah. Should he then, well, place well, Shakespeare further down on the list? Yeah. Because it's his father. Yeah. You know, uh, mm. when when your father is the greatest, I mean, some sons mu must have the greatest father in a, in. in in a sort of display, <laughs> so. Um, but then there's no. Well, maybe, but but Shakespeare did perhaps not write the place. But that's another. Uh, the, that's the next. Uh, the, yeah. on, on, on your next appearance at yes, the yes. <laughs> okay. um, But there, I just came to think of, think of something. If I shall be a bit uh, uh, diabolic, I would say, well, how can you make the list when you don't paint yourself? Yes, th that because is that's one of the kids, kids uh, questions. Like, <laughs> who can judge the pa painting uh, sculpt sculpture? Yes, the someone who those, sculpted himself or someone who's never sculpted. Uh, those questions are for other people. Not <laughs> I made I made that question, you know. Uh, no, but uh, but Aristotle. Uh, it was Aristotle that actually said that uh, those who work in the discipline judge that discipline better. Mm. Um, but he himself was uh, not a playwright. No. I and mean, I, he, he wrote some dialogues. It's it's uh, that well, I've heard that he wrote some dialogues. Yeah. They have never maybe the Vatican uh, archives. Uh, maybe they st are still hiding them in the Vatican. But but he wasn't. He was. I'm quite sure he wasn't a painter. Uh, but he still judged uh, painting and. I mean, this is a man who didn't paint, but he made the whole Renaissance paint uh, right. in a in like right. the, the best and make the best paintings that the world has right. has seen. Well, some of the best paintings that the world has seen. Yeah. So and uh, and, uh, and 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 the most important thing is not to uh, the most important thing is to observe nature, and that was what Aristotle did, and what, for example, Kant did not. Right. Kant sat in his sat in his office and. And wrote about the world he had never seen, about paint, about a discipline he had never been in contact with. I mean, he had an etching of uh, yeah, Rousseau in, in, in his house, and that was it. And, and but Aristotle actually observed uh, um, uh, the place, and he observed the paintings. You know, he he he, he talked about, uh, for example, he compared uh, um, Polignot and Pauson, the painters, yeah. and saying that young young people should look at. Polignot and not at Paulson, yeah. who is a comedy painter, and because they can become better human beings. And, and most of these things are based on, on uh, empirical uh, knowledge. Right. He actually observed, and, that, and that's the most important thing. And his son was a painter, right? Oh, what, what yeah. was he? Yeah, I think, uh, what was he? Well, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but his, yeah. his name, uh, what was his name again? Nicomachus is one of Nicomachus, yeah. yes, yes. I wonder if he was a painter. I'm I'm not totally sure. I have to be honest. Yeah, but uh, but there is rings yeah, a bell. Uh, yeah. But I'm just thinking because I I've, I've been thinking about the same thing, you know, preparing for this and also with with that such questions in mind. And I was thinking, well, okay, so you don't paint, but you are you have grown up with a father painting, discussing these things for many many years, making movies, which is all about narrative, and I would rather than trust your judgment and the judgment of, of an art historian who ha has never tried painting and mm -hmm. has swallowed the Hegelian doctrine of development. And like, for example, this one art historian, I 
would hope we can get on the show at some point. And she said when she studied in, in New York, uh, when she mentioned that, that uh, because of course she had been here, uh, that Rembrandt used his thumb and uh, you know to blur uh, a line or whatever, mm. and then this other student was like, "No, like Rembrandt could never use his thumb to paint with because he was a great genius, <laughs> like, completely detached from reality." Right? Okay. Um, well, then he shouldn't paint at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that's just a added comment. Okay. Um, here's another question. Uh, from a anonymous patron. What what are the top three of the uh, what is the top three of the best paintings in history? The three best paintings in history. Oh yes. Well, actually, we should have talked about that because it's it's a good reference mm. to to the list. Um, That's your yeah, chance. Yeah. Um, what what comes to mind immediately? Uh, is Nymph and Shepherd by Titian, but but also his uh, his uh, his Pietà, yeah, and the Bro Prodigal Son by Rembrandt, the best paintings in history, yeah, and I would also say the Golden Cape by my father, but but you know um, it's. It's very it's dangerous when you're talking about when you're talking about contemporary uh, things that are made uh, today and especially in recent time, because uh, you can see it in you can see it with a much more uh, with much more clarity uh, mm -hmm. when it becomes hundred years old, two hundred years old, three hundred years yeah. old. Uh, so so some of these paintings are really recent on this list are really recent paintings and um, th that might be a problem in the judgment. Right. Um, just one thing that I came to think of uh, mm. and has to do with with uh, what drama actually is. Because you have the martyrdom of Matthew. Yeah. Right? And so, if we, or, if, or if for example, the blind leading the blind by Bruegel. Yeah. I think you should pull uh, it a little bit higher up. Yeah. And then you have, for example, Goya, the 3rd of May. Yeah. But then you have The Prodigal Son. And compared to the 3rd of May, or compared to the martyrdom, martyrdom of Matthew, mm. there's not much physical action. No, so but isn't this less dramatic? Or how would you judge this? Uh, uh, up to or compared to, for example, the Mat Mat martyrdom of Matthew, which is like the example of drama and comp composition. Yeah, but uh, uh, you have this danger the the, uh, the Baroque painting. You know that yeah. a lot is going on, and and that's the nice nice thing about uh, the Prodigal Son by Rembrandt. That it's a very intimate drama. Yeah. Uh, it's very very. It's absolutely clear what what it's about. Mm. Uh, and, and, and intimacy is uh, something that one shouldn't, um, I mean, uh, like Ibsen's late plays are very mm -hmm. intimate. Mm -hmm. It all happens in one room and it gets very intense in that one yeah. room. But, but then you would say, okay, uh, the thing about Caravaggio, if you compare him to like typical Baroque painters, is that he is actually much calmer mm. than they are. We have. Oh, what's this guy again? It's one of the most famous ones. He was influenced by Caravaggio at, at some point. This is really embarrassing. One of the names you really know. Um, and he has this, uh, this uh, the, the killing of the innocents in Jerusalem. And it's like, I think it's like four or five images in one, on one canvas. It's just a horrible mess, the mm -hmm. whole thing. And when you compare Caravaggio to that, you see how focused he is. Um, but I, I'm just I just mentioned it to get, really yes. get a sense of. Yeah, but but it it is of course when you when you get more movement going on yeah. like in the figures, uh, it's it gets much more difficult. Yeah. To to make to make that into a, a, a um, uh, to make that into a, a credible drama. Yeah. Within within the frame framework. Yeah. It, it's much more challenging. So, but so just to be clear, drama then doesn't really uh, don't 
have to only have f figures moving, like gesticulations or facial expression that are strong or whatever. Because if you look mm -hmm. at uh, the Martin and Matthew, it has this anger and f uh, fear and, you know, of course, some, some of them are more passive, but there's a variety of expressions. So there's a conflict between these expressions. And there's yeah. not that in that sense, you could say, in, in The Prodigal Son by Rembrandt. No, it, it's, it's a very quiet painting. Yeah. But it's, it's so, so well made uh, and, 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 and dramatic at the same time. But of course, uh, if you can make something with more movement, uh, maybe you can make something that is even better. Right. There's, uh, there's a term that we've been talking about a lot uh, over the years, and that is indifference mm -hmm. in judging a painting. We've been talking about it in connection, of course, with Kant, mm -hmm. where it doesn't have, a, well, at least uh, for us, a very positive meaning. But then there's the, another idea of how we can judge a painting indifferent, and I'm thinking about uh, David Hume. Yeah. And th that's one thing I really uh, got from him. He was talking about how uh, you shouldn't let, you know, biographical information or anything like that uh, influence the way you look at a painting and if you like it mm -hmm. or not or if how you how you judge it or not right um, but how does the objective criteria that you are talking about how do they get demolished i mean we're talking about the whole 18th century and what is uh, what's going on there can you say a little bit about about that? Because you introduced another name that I wasn't uh, aware of, uh, a Scottish uh, writer, I think. Perhaps we could start with him. Yes, uh, we talked about it uh, when we had the, after the interview with Doug Suliel. I, sho mm, I, right. I showed, showed yeah. it to you guys. Yeah. Uh, it was something I was, um, I was looking through uh, the Invention of Art by Larry Shiner yeah. for references to you know, when, when things, uh, uh, these big changes happened. For example, when the architects were separated from the engineers. Mm -hmm. That happened in, in, in France in the 17, 1730s, I think 1740s, uh, and things like that. And then I, then I also came across uh, Alexander Gerard, who wrote an essay on the genius uh, 15 years prior to Kant's critique of judgment. Right. And I mean, I'm quite sure Kant read Gerard because, and, and, I'm, I, and I think Gerard is, he's at least the, f the first one I've found to talk to be, he's like Kant on speed uh, when, he talks <laughs> about, uh, when he talks about the genius. And, and, and he talks about the genius as an inventor. Right. I have uh, something from his book here yeah. that I would like to read. Please. Um, but first I would like to say that he, he talks, I mean, for, for Alexander Gerard, it's all about invention when he talks about the great uh, poets of right. history. So he says that, for example, Sophocles, Euripides, and these uh, early playwrights, that they, they are great because they displayed some, some form of invention. Mm -hmm. That they invented, uh, th that they invented something, uh, and then people have used that afterwards right. when they write plays. And the problem then is that the emphasis on invention takes away the the craft needed to <laughs> to actually uh, execute the in invention, right? I mean, it's a, it's only focus on the invention and not focus on the craft needed. Well, yeah, that, that's I will I will get to that. Okay. Uh, and so 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 this is something he writes about uh, Homer. Uh, the genius of Homer has been always held in veneration. His Iliad, his Odyssey, and even his more trivial productions display so much of rich and original invention in almost every possible way, as would have secured to the author an acknowledgement of very uncommon genius though he had lived in the most enlightened age and possessed all advantages for improving his natural talents. But our idea of his invention is immensely raised when we consider that he lived in times of ignorance, when poetry remained almost in its first rudiments, 
that he had no model uh, by which he could direct his conceptions or from which he could receive so much of a hint of his grand designs. On account of original and extensive invention thus amazingly displayed, his title to the first rank of genius has been acknowledged by all capable and impartial judges. The Eneid uh, by Virgil is perhaps more correct and faultless than the Iliad, but few have pretended that Virgil is the greater poet. He does not show such copious and boundless invention as his master. Besides, Virgil derives from imitation many things for which Homer is indebted solely to his own penetration. Yes, and 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 uh, and he also goes on to say, just you know, just to be sure, uh, is he is he is he talking about? I mean, uh, can can you improve inventions, and and does that have a lot of value? Uh, and then he says, uh, he says one place, his invention may be irregular, he talked about the genius, wild, undisciplined, but still it is regarded as an infallible mark of genius. And later on, they who improve the discoveries of those who have gone before them are ordinarily entitled only to the second rank. Improvement, better quality is second rank. Yes. And I think that's quite that radical is, for the time. That is the way to destroy a culture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you take, if you say that, well, to be skilled, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> but it's not as good as pure invention. That's how you, I mean, uh, yeah, that's one thing I was thinking about. You know, when we're getting into the to how this affects how we live today or the culture today, um, that what is happening is that they tear down objective criteria with mm -hmm. that. Right? Yes, and 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 uh, I mean, if you take away objective criteria, uh, you take away um, comparison, right. and if you take away comparison. You take away competition, and if you take away competition, well, then we're all just perfect the way we are. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, when he talks about uh, talks about the genius being an inventor, it's much. I think it's very much in the time that uh, they were. I mean. Even even uh, in in poetry, you should have like a scientific language, you know. Inventions in in science is mm -hmm. very uh, it's highly regarded. And then I guess Gerard just thinks, okay, so if if I invention is the highest thing, then then let's just apply to right to uh, playwrights and painters. And I think uh, if if is it Larry Scheiner or is it Paul Oscar Christler who wrote um, uh, the Renaissance. Uh, system of the arts, is it? Uh, who, ha who makes the same point that the system of arts prior to fine art is something completely different than fine art. You go from basing yourself on objective criteria to, you know, very evasive, foggy concepts like invention, for example. Um, but he makes the same point there that uh, this whole, uh, you know, obvious development in the sciences. Be became such a thing that everybody wanted to be a part of. And so they started mm. to think like that also in what is now known as fine art. We also want to show that we've done something new. Yeah, but then uh, you have these uh, strange contradictions because Kant says that uh, art is the opposite of science. Yeah. But at the same time, he is talking exactly like uh, um, Alexander Gerard about the genius being an inventor. Yeah. Uh, having uh, some, uh, I mean, that he's original. Mm. So, so uh, it's a very strange mix of things going on at that time. Yeah. Uh, but that's why you want to bring back, th that's why you're making the, that list with the objective criteria of, uh, very much based on Aristotle, uh, as far as I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the poetics has been, uh, uh, that's something uh, that has been a big influence for this, for this list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But uh, how do you, uh, I mean, that's one thing that uh, we, we talked about uh, bringing up a, a, up as a subject. How does this influence what is done generally today when it comes to, for example, these uh, st statue topplings? I mean, you've gone into that uh, uh, quite a bit. Yeah. And um, for example, you mentioned this uh, sculptor in, uh, where is it? Where uh, New, Me New Mexico? Yeah, uh, Rivera. Uh, 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 Reynaldo Rivera. Yeah. And he actually, yeah. he actually made, uh, 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 together with uh, uh, another uh, a female sculptor, um, I forget her name now, um, he made, in the late 90s, he made a, a sculpture group, uh, more than 20 life-size bronze sculptures mm. uh, for this uh, monument over uh, uh, Oñate, the, the man who founded New Mexico. Right. And now, of course, they have uh, they have removed some of the figures because right. of uh, the riots and things like that. But how does this relate to judging things by objective criteria? Well, when you don't have objective criteria, uh, I mean, you. The, the, the funny thing with all these these people uh, li like Kant and everyone that comes after him, they 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 are trying to they are trying to. Uh, live outside reality but right. they are at the same time they're bound by reality and so what happens is that they are not aware of their criteria that they have some sort of you could call it objective criteria mm -hmm. that for example uh, today instead of uh, looking at how well it is executed and if it has drama in the painting you, you're you're looking at um, if the painter has the right uh, background economically socially and and racially and uh, right and those things and that's where you're you could call that uh, you could call that objective criteria <laughs> in some <laughs> strange way yeah, yeah well I mean people generally feel when there's or when they're not uh, uh, when those criteria are not beneficial to them right even though you don't have a, a clear set of criteria or written down anywhere uh, people generally know when they uh, satisfy those criteria or not Mm. Because you get that, that's what I talked about with Stefan Bolter about this, this virtue signaling to appeal to those criteria. And that's when you make work that reflect the time and then very quickly just goes out of fashion. Yeah, that, that's why it's important to have objective criteria because you're going mm. to have some sort of criteria anyways. Mm. And if it's not ob objective criteria, it's going to be some kind of absurd criteria. Yeah, uh, so, so, uh, and it's the same thing with imitation. I mean, everyone imitates, yeah. and you can you can call those who imitate. Uh, 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 I mean, like Alexander Gerard, you can you can call them worthless, and those who display invention are the great great ones. But but uh, they also imitated, and uh, yeah, yeah. it's better to be but aware of your nature instead of uh, acting as, as if it doesn't exist. Right, and and of course also you go get into this self contradiction all the time if you're basing yourself on evasive. Uh, uh, terms like the whole, all those terms that you can use to, that you could s argue are objective criteria for, you know, modern or contemporary art. Well, fine art um, are being modern, being of your time, uh, expressing yourself. Uh, th there's no way you can have a histogram of self-expression. <laughs> it's like how do you how do you do that? Uh, perhaps perhaps uh, you can develop a system. <laughs> Um, but then, but then um, the connection I'm trying to make is then how, uh, well, they're taking down these statues. Mm. Uh, why is that a problem? Uh, that they're taking down the statues? Yeah. yeah. Why is that a problem? Why, I mean, if you have, for example, with Onyata, they have the, the uh, problem with how he treated the, the natives that they're talking about, and therefore you cannot have the sculpture there. Yeah, yeah, well, is that a valid argument, or is there well, something to it at all, or is what's wrong with it? Well, well that, that's that's a trap, of okay. course. Too. And 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 they never they never talk about uh, uh, the, the 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 sculptors who made these uh, uh, statues that are being taken down everywhere, and they don't and they never call it art. Mm. They never call these statues art. They call them statues. And you know, in, in, in a strange way, they, they, 
the way they have uh, de dealt with these uh, statues, it aligns very much uh, with the kitsch philosophy, except, you know, because they are not focusing on who made it, they are not calling it art, they are calling it what it is, they're calling it sculptures. So it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but w with one exception, of course, mm -hmm. and that is that they are focusing on the person who is portrayed and not how beautifully portrayed the figure is. Right. But then, like, I mean, uh, okay, a typical example that has been used in this uh, situation, well, they say, uh, people argue that, well, you know, it's uh, 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 the quality of the sculpture, sculpture, sculptures, and they've always been there and so on. But then they say, oh, well, what if you had the sculpture of Hitler in the town square? Would you accept that? Is that, is that like how do you yeah yeah it's that? just that uh, Hitler's mustache is is quite uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very contemporary <laughs> yes so so if he could uh, grow a beard or maybe take away the mustache I mean then you could make a really uh, I mean if Phidias made a, a monument over Hitler it yeah. would probably be amazing well I mean it's, that's where you get into the virtual signaling again right but and I'm uh, yeah yeah you, uh, but you uh, don't but I'm not focusing on the person no. That's yeah. the point. And there, there, there yeah. are so many people, I have also written about this in Civilization, and Karl Korsnes has a very nice article where he, where he, he, he uh, highlights the, the sculptors because yeah. uh, they really should do that. You know, Trump, yeah. is, uh, Trump is the most amazing president, um, uh, most amazing man in the bureaucracy that I have ever seen. But, but even he forgets to talk about the, 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 the sculptors. Right, yeah. Or his, his advisors yeah. are not... Uh, are not aware of it yeah they're not making him aware of it and, and, and uh, uh, sorry I, I, I lost my thread now um, uh, well yeah well it, it, one thing I, I could say is that that um, that is a problem generally also for uh, you know the so-called right or conservatives that they when it comes to culture they're not really conscious about these things they just follow the general ideas i mean they know a lot about real politics and economics and these things but uh, they are really generally quite weak on understanding what uh, speaking of objective criteria how to judge something yes and uh, instead uh, i remember now what, what i was mm -hmm. going to say you know instead uh, th these people on the right instead of um, instead of explaining you know the value of these statues mm -hmm. They are very, uh, they're apologetic, instead, or they try to defend the political position yeah. uh, in, in, in some way or another. But, you know, uh, the two of us and, and many that we know, we, we, we just love to look at how well the statue is executed and, yeah. you know, the drama, regardless, regardless of uh, uh, who is portrayed. I mean, I mean, my father has, uh, my father has, um, he made a, a painting called Siblings, um, where uh, my brother and my sister, they modeled, mm. and uh, they're having, a, um, a, what do you call it, uh, they are uh, erotically together. Mm. But that doesn't mean that, uh, <laughs> you know, we sh I should be angry or something. Uh, my father for 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 using my brother and sister they're just characters yeah in a painting yeah there are uh, so many yeah. examples of that in, in, yeah. in my father's paintings mm. and and i'm never uh, offended you know uh, when my father put me puts me in some kind of story right in the painting and so many uh, that we know and when we are like that we look at we look at the the sculptures for their their universal drama right and that's what Aristotle, Aristotle talks about. It's more philosophical than history because you're, you're, you're dealing with universals, mm -hmm. things that actually matter. And, and um, history is just, uh, uh, um, history is just, it's not a, a totally random um, uh, sequence of events, but it's not in, in the perfect order. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a... Uh, when you look at, for example, uh, Arno Brecher was a f favored uh, sculptor uh, under Hitler. Uh, they are really shitty work, but mm. not because of politics, it's because they're badly executed. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's no character, there's no intensity, there's nothing there. Yeah, and if you could, if you could bring back the objective criteria, uh, mm. uh, perhaps they wouldn't tear down so many statues. Uh, right. If you could, if you could. Uh, make them at least see, recognize it a little bit mm. that uh, we can we can also 
we can also, uh, I mean, it's very undemocratic of these people to mm. just tear down the statues when there's a lot of people who just enjoy the, the, the statues uh, for how well they are executed and right. for the drama that they display. Yeah. So, what's your stance on this idea that, uh, well, at least take them into a museum to keep them safe? <sighs> yes. To uh, isolate, that, that them, is isolate them in the museums, yeah. to use the corona language, yeah. or, or, or quarantine them. Yeah. I mean, uh, what you're doing is, the, the museums are, I think Boris Koller said it, uh, the, the museums are, are, are tombs. Yeah. They are, they are uh, places for dead things. Yeah things that we are finished with. Mm. That, that's and, 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 and also, he, he said it, you know, before we had the interview right before uh, the corona and all these statues, uh, all, all those things happened this crazy year. Yeah. And, and he said it back then, I think, that uh, the museum is a place where you protect, the, where you put all the stuff that you protect people, that you protect people from. <laughs> and what happens? Yeah. This is exactly what is going on now with the yeah. statues. They are yeah. putting them in museums yeah. to protect the statues or actually protect the people from the statues. Right. Yeah, so, so this whole thing about uh, taking down statues, uh, that is a direct consequence then of not having objective criteria? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, because I mean, that's <laughs> happened before. <laughs> Yes, well, yeah, yeah, in, in, in ancient times when the, they, it was basically the same thing where the Christians, uh, they, they th thought there were demons inside the statues. Right. They didn't look at, they didn't look at uh, the, how well they were made and, and, and so on. They, right. They, they saw something, they saw something, well, well, you can't see it, but they said it was inside the statues. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. that's the crucial issue here because uh, th that's so ironic. I've been mean, thinking about that a lot. Uh, you know, with uh, art, they laugh at execution, something that are ob something that you can say is objective, that you can judge some things and say it's uh, this good because of uh, technical issues. So it's the idea behind that counts. But suddenly, when they shall uh, oppose the idea behind. What, they, what these statues supposedly represent. They need to destroy this physical statue. <laughs> Suddenly they mm -hmm. have to take the, what is physical <laughs> and, and, and take it down. They, they can't yeah. then continue that logic to say that, well, I'm opposing something that is, is not physical. They have to, to turn that into to destruction. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's well, th th they, they have to do that uh, because what, what, what this is all about is, is uh, uh, it's it's a, a self imploding culture, right? A culture re it's a culture destroying itself. Yeah, it's re ready for for another culture to take over. Well, th that's that's the that's what automatically happens. Well, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but but I I, I see uh, I see a lot of uh, hope in 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 the in the classical figurative painters that are working now. I think there are many many very good ones like uh, uh, Kaike Polizelli. He's he's making some. Uh, he surprises me many times. Yeah, and he's on the list. Yes, he's on yeah. the list. And and Molly Judd. Yeah. Uh, she's she's really. Uh, she does impressive. Yes. Work. And I saw one recently from her that was. Really good. Uh, I don't remember the title, but it's it's a woman with a glass and a, and, and a man. Okay, I don't think yeah. I've seen man, but anyways, yeah. Yeah, oh. and Cammy Davis because that narcissist figure was made last year. So that is impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. Yes, and and um, yeah, and and if if people if it goes in this direction, you will see more of uh, things like this painting here by my father, uh, uh, frenzied woman. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe we should uh, round off with talking about that because then we're getting back to what we started with, the list, mm. the criteria. And, uh, okay, here's one uh, objection then. There's really no drama in this painting, is there? Because there's no real action going on. Well, I wish we I wish we had a bigger studio or <laughs> something like that, so we could have could have had uh, the golden cape on the wall. 
<laughs> we're, uh, we'll be socially distancing at the same time. <laughs> yeah, 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 this is perfect. Uh, uh, no, but uh, this this is a perfect example of how you can how you can display uh, drama in a portrait. I don't I don't agree uh, uh, with what you uh, you said. The, there's no drama here. No, I'm, I'm being yeah, yeah, provocative yes, yes. to see what yes, you're, okay, yeah. how you could argue. Right? No, no, but you have. Uh, there seems like there's some war, war situation going on here back there with this horse and the man, and and she's uh, uh, she's absolutely terrified. You can see that in her eyes, and uh, she's uh, holding this uh, child, and uh, well, if she's frenzied, uh, if that's that's something you could discuss. But uh, that's what Allah has called it. Yeah, but she's uh, in, she's in a war situation, and 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 instead of just uh, you know just a person sitting there in front of you, yeah, uh, it's 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 a movement. There's so something is going on. Yeah, I mean, if you compare this with something that is sort of typical contemporary, you quickly see the the, the difference. And I think you can make a seemingly calm motif really quite potent when it uh, through how uh, what you choose to focus on, right? Yeah, like uh, like that eye. Yeah, yeah. There. Yeah, because if you have two similar eyes, then it's <laughs> it just dies. Yes, and that's that's something uh, uh, you know. That's like like the um, fir first you make a grand scene like like here with the golden cape or or uh, the outcast or the passenger. Uh, but then you can also start adding um, uh, what do you call it uh, dual um, dual expressions like um, uh, like in uh, the prodigal son by Rembrandt where, oh, yeah. where he has one punishing eye and one forgiving eye yeah and he has one female and one male hand uh, right. on, yeah, on, on the, the sun. Janus, uh, yeah the, face. the Janus face yeah and that's yeah. that's uh, that's really that's then then you're um, then you're ju not just appealing to the people yeah. because the people need uh, some kind of uh, immediate entertainment mm. like uh, uh, a man killing another man yeah but then you can add those things to, uh, to for for um, for those who want to go uh, a b bit more into it right because I'm, I'm thinking about um, uh, I remember comparing. Uh, uh, the Marshes by Titian with the Marshes by Ribera. Yeah. You have the famous one where he's really screaming. You see all the teeth and he's like, ah, like this. And uh, on the face with Titian's uh, Marshes, it's really quite calm and quite undramatic, at least com immediately compared to, to Ribera. Mm. Um, but then uh, me and another uh, student just took the, the actual heads of the marshes, and of course they're upside down. And but if you turn them the correct way, as they would be standing, you suddenly see that that uh, uh, the face of the marshes by Ribera, he seems like some 1920s tap dancer, like da -da, like this. You know? mm. <laughs> and there's there's no there's no pit and suffering there at all. And then you see the, uh, the Titian's marshes the right way, and suddenly you see this great drama the mouth going down like that when you see it upside down you you, you perceive a smile mm -hmm. because of the, the movement and then you turn to the right way and suddenly it becomes this great drama great tragedy yes and then yeah. then with with uh, this Janus uh, technique uh, it, it's it seems even more alive because yeah. you, you are not in control anywhere anymore when you're watching it it's as if they are alive Right. Because it's it could go one way or the other, and uh, yeah, yeah, you see it there. For example, in that face, he's both it's smiling and and he knows he's going to die. You know, yeah, the falcon area. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so, yeah, and and you also see that with ancient Greeks, like we saw with the Praxiteles figure. Right. So that's that's uh, that's storytelling to another level. Right. Yeah. I think that's a nice finish. Borknerd, mm. thank you for coming to the KO Palace. Well, thank you. And thank you for watching. Remember, you can support our show at patreon.com slash palace. I'll see you next month.